everybody. Today you're going to start making the Halloween house collage project that I know you all love. I actually wasn't going to do this project this year. I thought you all could use a break, but then I learned you were all really disappointed with that news. So we are going to make them after all so that if you guys love the project, you'll have an opportunity to make it. Um, today will be step one, which is just to make the black outline of the house called a silhouette. You'll be doing that using squares, rectangles, and triangles. Next class period, you'll be using yellow shapes to create windows and doors on top of your black shapes. And then the finishing step, as you all know, is to add these details with Sharpie. So that'll be the third and final class period. So let's focus on what you're gonna be doing today, which will be creating this black silhouette of a house. To get started, you're going to need a background color of paper. I'm gonna use orange today for this one. A yellow piece of paper and a circle tracer. A pencil, some scissors, and some glue to get started. Okay, the first two things I want you to do are to write your name on your new paper. I'll write my name on mine. And then I want you to write your grade level and your class teacher. So for example, if you're third grade Mr. Lane, you're gonna write 3-L. You guys know what grade and what your teacher code is for me. The second thing you'll need to do is use a pencil to trace your circle for your full moon. If you'd like to make your full moon a crescent moon instead, still trace the full circle, and then you can start with your pencil about right here and draw a very carefully drawn C like that. And then you can just cut on that line instead. That's your choice to make. The next thing will be to cut out your circle. Okay, I like to keep my workspace clean, so I'm gonna throw these scraps in the recycling bin or the trash can. I'm gonna return my circle tracer to the middle table, and I'm actually going to return my pencil sharp point facing down as well. I will still need my glue and my scissors. So I'm going to flip my paper over so that my name is on the back and I'm looking at the front. My paper is oriented in portrait, which means that it is tall, not wide. I'm gonna open up my glue here. If I can't hear air coming out or glue coming out, it might mean there's a little bit of clogged glue or dried glue here at the end. If I pull that off, then the glue should work better. When I go to apply glue to my circle, I wanna look at both sides. Whichever side has the leftover pencil marks from my tracing is the side that I'm gonna put glue on so that I can hide or conceal those marks when I apply the glue. When I glue, I need to give the glue a moment to come out and ooze out the tip because it is thick like honey. So don't flip it over. If it doesn't come out right away, that doesn't mean that the glue bottle is empty. It might just mean that you need to give it a moment to come out to the tip. I'm gonna apply a very thin line of glue on the back, just a circle because I'm gluing a circle down and I didn't put my glue too close to the edges because I don't want it to squish out the sides when I glue it down, but also because then I can hold onto it with my fingers and have control of my shape without getting glue all over my fingers. When I go to glue my moon onto my paper, I wanna make sure that it is high on the paper so that my paper doesn't, or that my house doesn't cover the uh, moon. And I can glue my moon left or right or centered, but I wanna make sure it doesn't go up off of my paper. I'm gonna put mine right about. Okay, now I'm all ready to start working on my house. So I will bring around in a few minutes some square and rectangle shapes that are black paper that you can use to make your house. Your house should really only be made out of maybe three or four or five shapes to begin. So I'm gonna decide on some shapes that I like. I can use them as they are, or if they're too big, I can either trim them, or maybe the easier thing to do is just to overlap them a little bit. Maybe I'd like to go up this way. Maybe it makes more sense to trim this one. And I can overlap it some so it's not quite so tall. Maybe I'll overlap it like this. I tend to like to make one tall part of the house when I'm making a Halloween themed house just so it looks kind of like a tall, old, gothic house, but you can make yours shaped however you want. Okay, once I have this one, two, three, four shapes that make up mine, I'm gonna get those shapes glued down, so I need to kind of pull them apart. 
I'm going to apply glue to the back side. Again, I'm giving the glue a moment to make its way to the tip before I complain that my glue bottle is empty. When I apply glue on the back, it's a very thin line. It's the same shape as my paper with no glue in the middle. And I didn't put the glue so close to the edges because I don't want it to squish out the sides and I want to be able to pick up my paper without putting my fingers in the glue. And then I can flip it over nicely. If you make a mistake with the glue and notice that you've put too much on there, that's okay. Just so long you've noticed that you made that mistake and then you try to do a better job on your next shape. The problem is when you make the same mistake over and over and over without realizing it or taking care to try to fix your mistake and get better at gluing. I'm gonna get my last shape glued on here. Okay. Now I'm ready to start creating rooftop shapes, which usually are kind of triangular. So I'm gonna start with any square or rectangle I have sitting around, and if I cut it diagonally from corner to corner, then I've got two smaller triangles to work with. Maybe that would work nicely here. This one might work here, it seems a little small. Maybe it's better here. Maybe I'll trim this shape down to a smaller square. Cut this diagonally to get two triangles. That gives me a pretty good shape for here. Maybe if I cut this in half again, and yet again, each time I cut it in half, I end up with smaller equal triangles. Maybe I can use these on their sides to create slanted rooftops. And then my favorite thing to do with a Halloween themed house is to do a two-part roof to make part of it look really tall. So maybe I'll trim this shape down like this. And I'm going to cut this to make a triangle that is taller and thinner than this triangle. And then I can layer this one on top to create a roof that looks more like an old Gothic building. Maybe I can use the leftover scrap of this one to cut another similar shape that I can then use with this triangle roof to make a two-part roof. When I'm happy with my shapes for my rooftops, I'm gonna repeat the same step for gluing. Very skinny little lines of glue. You're trying to get two pieces of paper to stick together, not two bricks, right? step one. You might have time to finish step one today, or maybe you'll end up having to leave some loose shapes on your paper that you didn't have time to glue. You can leave those on your paper and put your artwork on the back counter, and then what will happen is next class period, they'll still be there on your paper, and you can glue them down at that time. And then next class period, I will also show you how to start using yellow shapes to create windows and doors. This one has a little pop-up. Okay friends, when you're ready for step number two, you're gonna need your glue bottle, you're going to need some scissors, and you'll need some uh, pre-cut out square and rectangular shapes out of yellow paper that the teacher will, will provide for you. So I'm gonna start today by making a door. You can make a door uh, with a classic rectangular shape if you want. Maybe I'll trim this one down. This would be a very large door, but that's okay. Maybe I would prefer it to be a little bit smaller. That would work nicely or maybe I would prefer to round the top with my scissors to make more of an arched door that's a choice you can make as well maybe I want my door here or here or here you can think those things through if I want it to look like double doors I could cut right up the middle of my door and when I glue them leave a little black gap between the two so that they look like double doors when I'm ready to glue a shape I'll make sure that I put a very small amount of glue on the back because again, we're just gluing papers together. We're not trying to make bricks stick together. So we don't want to use way too much glue and make our papers soggy and rippled and messy. Then I'm gonna start thinking about windows. So I kind of would like to make some several windows that go up here that match each other. If you want to make shapes that match, you could start with a larger shape and cut it in half and then stack those papers together 
cut them in half again. So then I've got four rectangles that all match each other. Or if I want to, I can hold all those together and make them rounded or arched to match my door. I don't have to do that, but I can if it interests me. Maybe these would look nice stacked up this long part right here. Maybe that's too many. Maybe I'll just do three. Maybe this one should go over here. I could make a long, thin window or two. I can make a, let's see here. I could make a circular window, which is kind of cool for an attic space in the roof. So maybe I would like that there. Another cool shape for an attic is maybe a shorter little like semicircle. Maybe I'd like to put that one there and move this one down. These seem a little long to me, so I'm gonna trim them. about my shapes. Apply a very small amount of glue. Scraps like this need to be discarded in the trash can, please. Or any shapes that are crinkled or have glue on them. But shapes like this that are still fairly large and very usable for other students can go back in the bin with the other shapes to be reused. But we want to make sure that our shape bin is not a trash bin, so these will be put in the trash. Next, I'd like to show you how to make these pop-outs that might interest you. You could do just one on the door. You don't have to do any pop-outs at all, actually, but you could just do one on the door, but you could also make them on windows if you really like that process. So to do that, you're gonna go back to using black shapes. This one's very large, so I'm gonna trim it down. You want your starting shape to be just a little bit larger than your door or your window that you're going to be covering. So I'm gonna kind of lay this over my uh, door so that I can see that I'm cutting out a little bit wider than I need to. And then I'll look here to make sure that I am also cutting out a little bit taller than my door is. This could be trimmed down a little bit more still. Okay. And then if my door is rounded, I can leave this covering rectangular, or if I prefer, I can round the top of this to match my door. I can choose if I want this to hinge on one side or the other side, or it can hinge from the top or even from the bottom like a drawbridge. But since my doors are two doors, maybe what I'd like to do instead is do a double hinge on each side. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna start by cutting my shape right up the middle like I did when I made my door. Put this aside so you can see what I'm doing. And this is the tricky part, so watch closely. The door is going to hinge right here. That's the part that's attached to the rest of the house and will be where it swings open. So I am going to make a very small fold right there. The same thing for this one on the outside. So now you can see up close here, there's that little fold. So now I have these two pieces that will fit on top like this. I'm going to apply a very, very, very small amount of glue right there on the hinge see how that's the part that I glued. And then I'm just going to lay my door right on top of the yellow part, press this part down. And of course, this isn't going to feel very secure until the glue has actually finished drying. 
So if you have over glued and used a lot of glue, that's just gonna remain wet until probably past when you leave at the end of class. So it's not gonna feel very secure. But if you've used a very small amount of glue, then it will dry very quickly and feel secure and you'll be able to hinge your door open to reveal that yellow shape underneath. So now I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. This little part that sticks out kind of like the a letter L. It's gonna get a tiny little amount of glue. I don't wanna overdo it because it will take too long to dry and it won't feel secure. And then I will lay it right on top and press that part down. I'll make sure it's really stuck down well and then I can check it to hinge it open. So if you really like that idea, you could also do that for any windows that you want to. and They can hinge from the top or the bottom or the left or the right. In this case, maybe I would make one big shape that would hinge and reveal both of them. I'll leave that up to you. All right, for finishing touches with Sharpie, all other supplies will be put away and you'll get two Sharpies. A thicker one that's called a fine tip that has the marker tip for bigger areas and a thinner one called an ultra fine tip that has more of a pen tip for those very small details. I'm gonna switch this one out that I just finished working on because the glue on it is still wet. So I'm gonna switch it out for one that is dry to draw my details on. I have a pop out door on this one too. So I'm gonna show you lots and lots of ideas, but of course, any changes you wanna make or anything else that you would rather add is absolutely up to you. You don't have to use my ideas and you don't have to use my ideas as I draw them. So uh, one place to start might be to draw a spider. I'm gonna start with my ultra fine, and I like to draw a spider by making kind of an oval shape. And I added a little strand right here that can belong to his web. If you wanna make a web, one way to do that would be to start in any corner draw maybe three lines that all start from that corner but fan out in different directions and then you're just going to connect those by making these little kind of curved lines they look kind of like shallow U shapes like bump 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 and if you want that web to look kind of old or I don't know in disarray you can skip areas so that it looks like it's kind of coming apart Something else you might want to draw is a scaredy cat. Um, a scaredy cat arches its back and tries to get as big and fluffy as it possibly can. So I'm going to start with a little tiny cat head that has ears and color the whole thing in black. Everything is drawn completely in black and colored in with black so that it looks like a silhouette, no details. Then I can draw two legs coming down close to the head here in the front. And I'm going to draw two more legs in the back. They look kind of silly right now, but I'm going to connect them with an upside down U shape or a rainbow shape. And a second one like this, maybe I'll make this one a little shallower. This is a good time to switch over to the fine tip Sharpie because it's bigger when you're coloring in areas that you can color them in more quickly and easily. So now I've got a cat with an arched back and I just need a big foofy tail. You know how cats like to foof out their tail when they're scared. In my house we call that pine cone tail. <laughs> okay, so then we got a scaredy cat. Maybe you might like to draw a pumpkin. So I could start that like this with two lines, like a C and a backward C. Give it a stem. And I'm gonna give it two triangle eyes and a bottom of a semicircle for the mouth. And this would be another good time to switch over to the vine tip. That's bigger, so you can more quickly color that in. Perhaps you would like to draw a chimney, or two, or three. Lots of old houses had chimneys in multiple rooms because they didn't have central heating in the winter time, and so you could heat a room with a fireplace very easily, so sometimes lots of rooms had fireplaces. So there's one chimney. Maybe I'd like to make a ghost coming out. I'm going to start with two big eyes, and I'm going to give them kind of this like silly dollop shape, kind of like a Hershey kiss for the head arms and then a kind of a wiggly body that gets smaller to look like it's coming out of the chimney and then I'll just color it in.
Next, maybe I'll do a bat or two in the sky. I have this little smudge on my paper and I'm gonna cover it or conceal it with a bat. So I start with the letter M for the head and then give it two big hops for wings. And then underneath, we're gonna do little hops to connect. And then just color it in. Something else you might want to do, maybe my ghost is saying boo. I could write boo normally, but I'm going to make the letters look wiggly just for fun. Maybe I'd like to make some clouds. When I make clouds, I tend to make them fluffy on top and flat on the bottom, but you can make your clouds however you want to. Maybe they overlap the moon, that's kind of nice when that happens. And then I'll just color it in. space on either side. I could draw a fence post to make it look like part of the fence over here. And then draw the horizontal parts. So in order for your house to be completed or considered finished, you need to draw something in every window and in your door, and I want to see at least two things in the sky. And of course, you can use my ideas, but I absolutely love to see and hear your ideas as well. You don't have to have something different in every window. If you want to draw a spider in each one of these, and a pumpkin here, and a pumpkin here, um, and a web here, and a web here, you can do that. If you want to draw a ghost here waving hello to greet you at the door when you open it, go ahead. If you want to make a witch on a broom in the sky, go for it. If you have lots of other ideas, I'd love to see those too. <laughs> 